ERC-404 is a new experimental smart contract token standard that combines elements of normal ERC-20 tokens and ERC-721 NFTs, allowing for easier trading and division of ownership of these assets. It's an unofficial token standard developed by the Pandora team, which was the first project using this token contract design. While it offers several advantages, there are some risks involved, as it hasn't been vetted by the Ethereum community. I'll explain everything you need to know in this short and easy to understand video. However, bear in mind that there's no financial advice on this channel. I'm just gathering the facts, so my lazy friends don't have to. Token standards are formal sets of rules and protocols that determine the behavior of tokens on the blockchain network. ERC-20 is basically any fungible token traded on Ethereum or any EVM equivalent chain that uses the ERC-20 token standard. The Ethereum framework is widely adopted across the industry, enabling tokens to be created, issued, and deployed for various purposes. These tokens can be divided into smaller pieces, similar to the dollar, and can be exchanged for one another through liquidity pools on decentralized exchanges completely permissionless. On the other hand, ERC-721 is also a token standard, but for non-fungible tokens. Think of these NFTs as digital art or collectibles, where each one is owned by someone with exclusive rights. Once an NFT is created, it cannot be changed or divided into several pieces. Unlike fungible tokens, like HEX, where one HEX is equivalent to one HEX, each NFT is unique and one of a kind. This brings us to ERC-404, aiming to combine elements of both fungible tokens and non-fungible tokens. In this semi-fungible token design, there are fungible tokens that are linked to a corresponding amount of non-fungible tokens. If a wallet holding fractions of a token purchases enough fractions to hold a complete token, a new NFT is minted automatically. Similar to any ERC-20, these fractions can be sold or transferred to any other wallet. However, when a transaction results in the ownership of less than one complete token, the NFT will be burnt out of existence. In the hope of acquiring one of the rare NFTs, some NFT enthusiasts have been trading in and out of liquidity pools and transferring tokens back and forth between wallets. This process results in the burning of an old NFT while potentially minting a rarer one. One should proceed with caution as these actions could also result in mistakenly burning one's previously minted rare NFT. It's important to note that transferring the NFTs themselves to a new wallet does not affect the NFTs and will result in the tokens to be transferred along with them. Before engaging in any of the existing ERC-404 projects, it's important to understand that when your purchase leads to the minting of an NFT, it will result in a higher transaction fee. Given the skyrocketing Ethereum gas fees, projects like Gophers have decided to launch their ERC-404 on PulseChain as well, a cheaper and faster Ethereum fork. Purchasing one whole good old-fashioned unregistered security token automatically mints one out of six Gophers NFTs to your wallet. There's a total supply of 10,000 Gophers tokens, each corresponding to a Gophers NFT. These NFTs can be traded on any NFT marketplace just like regular NFTs, where their token price acts like a price floor for the NFTs. ERC-404 is an open and permissionless network for any builder to utilize and has captured the attention of some of the brightest minds in the industry after just a few days. This token standard offers several advantages, such as preventing slippage by enabling token trading in the form of NFTs without impacting the price, providing arbitrage opportunities as the token price becomes the NFT's floor price, connecting crypto degens with NFT enthusiasts, and allowing NFTs to be traded in fractions. By design, all ERC-404 NFTs are likely to become deflationary as more and more people own fractions of these NFTs, resulting in fewer NFTs being minted. However, there is still much to uncover about this new experimental token standard, so proceed with caution and conduct your own research before participating in any project. 
Feel free to ask any questions you might have in the comments below. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video useful. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.